Elwyn, welcome to the show. Good morning to you. Um, you have released a um, couple of, um, um, I guess, policy papers, but the thing that's really interested me is you've ranked all the secondary schools in New Zealand based upon university entrance and their academic ability to give that qualification to um, the levers from each of those schools over the last five years, uh, 19, was it 2018 to 2021? Is that right? Last four years? Yeah, yeah. four years, yeah. Listen, the thing that, um, so the reason I'm asked you on the show is because I want to go through this with you and, and the obvious stuff here is the top 10 schools, so I'll just read them out very quickly, Diocesan School for Girls, which is in Auckland, Woodford House, which is obviously in Hawke's Bay, Auckland International College, Rangiruru, which is a private girls' school, Anglican, isn't it, in uh, Christchurch, Samuel Marsden Collegiate, which is uh, up at, I think, Hutt Valley. Mm -hmm. Baradine, where's that? Is that in Christchurch? Baradine or is that in Auckland? No, that's uh, in Auckland. Chil Sorry, Samuel Marsden's in um, Karori. What am I talking about? Chilton St James is in Hutt Valley, isn't it? St Oran's College, St Cuthbert's College in Epsom, King's College, obviously Auckland, ACG Strathallan and Springbank School. Now, they, they are the top sort of 10, 11 schools on the top of the list. They all have one thing in common, they are all, I think, without exception, private schools. Is that right? Uh, or sorry, integrated schools, independent schools. Yeah, private or, or um, integrated. Yes. Yeah. Um, now, the, the obvious question is: I would suggest to you that they're probably all decile ten as well. Is that right? Yeah. So under the new uh, system, the equity index number system. Yeah. We kind of have to think in reverse. So they're <coughs> all low equity, I equity index number. Schools. So they'll all be um, under, under 400? Uh, well under 400. Yeah. So for, because the ministry didn't put an equity index out for private schools, I used 350 as a sort of proxy. Yeah. Um, but all of those are, yes, under 400. Right. And as I go down the list, um, I keep, go right down to the bottom of the list. And um, obviously those have much higher numbers when it comes to the so-called poverty index or whatever it might be. Um, mm -hmm. I guess one of the things I'd ask you, the really interesting thing to me in these statistics that you've put out is the variation from one year to the next, and I'm sure you've realised that as well. Um, yep. And, and I, I wonder, I understand that some years you'll have a bright cohort, particularly in a smaller size school, or a dumb cohort going through, um, just using my boon. But, does, <laughs> but, but, but as a general rule, if a cohort is, if, if the fingers are dropping, does that indicate dropping standards of that school as well? Yeah, so I, I guess I what I've tried to do with that document as well is, is to look at the schools who um, have got quite a high equity index number uh, and yet they've got good and improving results. And then I, I guess the second thing is the way that that equity index number has been introduced to schools, so it's the new way of giving schools marginal funding. So, um, if someone's got a high equity index number, they get sorry about the ducks in the background if you can hear them. That's right. Uh, if someone gets a uh, is on a higher in equity index number, then they get more marginal funding. But the way it's been introduced, they don't have to set a goal uh, for improvement. They don't have to say what they're going to spend that extra money on, and there's nothing to measure it against. So it's it's to me it's uh, it's it's nice that I know that they've changed something, but they've changed it without the mechanisms to make it effective. And there are only about 410 uh, high schools in New Zealand. Um, Hiki Parata tried very blunt instruments such as uh, every school had to get 85% of the students to level two NCEA, which was open to you know all sorts of shenanigans. Um, but in this case, you can take any of those uh, schools that are not performing particularly well, say, okay, what's a fair goal for this year? And get the community involved. And there's more metrics than just UE. I mean, you can do level one, level two, level three, attendance, retention, um, and sit down and say, right, how do we improve? How do we get the community involved? So your teacher's got a reason to get out of bed in the morning. Also interesting, Elwyn, when I'm looking at these figures as well, 
um, and I will post them on the platform for you as well. They are the percentage of leavers sure. from every secondary school in New Zealand um, over the last four yep. years, 2018 to 2021, the records are. Um, obviously, next year, last year will be added to this as well. But um, yep. uh, it, it, it would be helpful, and I'm sure people have suggested this to you too, um, when, and I guess you could, you just do it just by scrolling through it, ranking them against... In other words, trying to put the success against the decile. We know, yes. all of us, that if you're in the old decile 10 schools, we would expect students coming from those backgrounds to do better than the kids in the decile 1 schools. And there seems to be yep. almost a, a linear correlation um, as you go through the deciles as to academic achievement or non-achievement. Um, yeah, I, I, would, I would dispute that. Um, first of all, I, I think... Your, your expectation or, or societal <coughs> expectation that decile 10 kids do better than decile 1. Uh, I, I think is, yes, it looks factual, but it, I don't believe it should be the case. Uh, the reason that uh, uh, high EQI number schools get more funding is to actually produce results for those kids. So um, we, we, we shouldn't be excusing it. it. It might be more difficult, but it's wrong to excuse it. And then um, I think the second thing is that even across the EQI numbers, but certainly across the deciles, there was a huge range of achievement uh, where you had, say, a decile one school like Macaulay in Odahu, um, ahead of a good number of decile 10 schools. Um, and, and so to me, as I think I might have said before, schools like Macaulay, uh, Manakura, uh, St. Paul's and Ponsonby, which is sort of 95% Māori and Pacifica, with a UE at 84%. Uh, those schools pull the rug out from under all the other schools. And, and if we continue to excuse non-achievement because of socioeconomics, we're, we're, we're not doing the children any favour. All right. Um, let's examine that thesis for a wee while. If I was to take, say, mm -hmm. Woodford House, which is a private yes. girls' school in Havelock, north of... Um, Yep. Hawke's Bay, and I must compare it to, say, Flaxmere College, which is just down the road at Flaxmere, um, yeah. yep. in, in a seriously socially deprived area of New Zealand. Um, yes. You're not seriously suggesting to me that the girls at Woodford, ha no, that the people that go to Flaxmere College that come in at year, I think they come in at year seven there, actually, um, mm -hmm. are going to have anything like the same achievement levels, no matter what you do, as the girls that come out of Woodford House? Well, I think that no matter what you do is a, is a, is a very key <coughs> part of what you've just said. So um, I, I don't believe the ability to solve uh, these issues, and they are really significant for our whole society, um, reside within the Ministry of Education or, or within the current politicians who are um, education interest is. Um, I, I believe it very much resides within the need to um, massively enhance uh, um, parenting within New Zealand. So one of the key or the key recommendation in the um, blue report that I've got there mm -hmm. um, is that we actually um, begin a crown entity for parenting in New Zealand uh, because we need to enable and encourage all families for their children to turn up at five years old, ready to go. Um, you know, knowing how to write their name, knowing how to sit on a mat, uh, rudiments of reading, um, all those sorts of things. So, as I say, the key thing, as you said, no matter what we do, I think there are things that we can do to massively improve those outcomes. All right. Um, I'm also interested that um, in the Blue Report you say, um, in effect, uh, you talk about proposals that you think will change New Zealand's um, lamentable um, educational outcomes. But the first uh -huh. is that you think that we need a Crown Agency for Parenting to provide yeah. information to make New Zealand the very best parenting country on the planet. So you start yeah. with that, just developing what, further what you said, that the parent has got to be at the centre of any educational reform, yeah? I, I, I think it's an imperative. Uh, and, you know, the other, the other kids on the block have failed. 
um, um, but parents often feel excluded and, you know, even um, parents who you would think probably know better uh, will often say, I can't wait for my kids to get to school to learn to read. Um, and, and, you know, one of the big issues is that uh, the research tells us that uh, children in, on average in higher socioeconomic families during their first three to five years of life hear something like 80% more words and, and more positive words than children in the lower socioeconomic. Well, that's nothing to do with how much money. That, that's to do with knowledge and, hey, talk to your kids and all that sort of stuff. And you remember a few years ago, there was, you know, we had a sort of mild push in, uh, from memory. I think it was Tana Umanga. Would, there were some ads on TV and things like that. But it's got to be really pervasive. And we've got to work out how to reach these families because they're not likely to sit down and watch the ad breaks on One News or all of this sort of stuff. Um, but it, it absolutely must start with the families. Um, you also talk about draining the swamp. You say the Ministry of Education yep. has gone from 2,900 full-time employees to 4,000 bureaucrats in the last three years, but that this number uh -huh. has inversely related to school achievement. Why yep. would you increase the Ministry of Education by 1,100 full-time staff over the last three years? Where the hell have they gone? I have no idea, and I, I'm afraid I have no idea what they do. Um, and, you know, in... in in the House, Grant Robertson, Chris Hipkins, whoever, will stand up and they say, you know, we are investing in education as if they're putting the money on the table, um, not the taxpayer. But the second thing is that if you think about the word investing, if you invest in something, you expect a return. And at the moment, <laughs> the returns are, are falling off the cliff. Um, and you even take the little attendance announcements, uh, you know, where we've got, you know, something like 40 six percent in term three last year of students across all these sales uh, were not fully attending uh, just over 20 percent uh, of this sale one the government has no idea what, why they aren't attending because they haven't researched it so all they do is Jan Smithy throws another 74 million and says somehow 80 uh, attendance officers will make all the difference just you watch how it works and again it's nonsensical um, and, and they, they need to be called to account for it. Mm. Um, and on that, you say also we need to move away from a stop kids falling through the crack mentality. Uh, you make this, yep. um, it's an interesting paragraph, but it, it's not very long. We need to respect and love intelligence as much as we love brawn. If the Auckland All Black coach loses a game or two, the nation goes nuts. The Minister and Secretary of Education can oversee huge systemic failure and very few appear to give a rat's backside. Um, that's true, isn't it? I mean, you don't notice people protesting in the streets, camping out on Parliament's lawn for three months, um, or writing letters to the editor about New Zealand's declining <laughs> education standards. No, and I think, it, again, what, what we've had in grain is kind of a like, uh, if my kids are okay, then it's okay sort of thing. And I, I, I get that, you know, I, I work very hard uh, along with my wife to make sure our kids got a really good education. Um, but w what we ought to also be realising is that the whole country and the whole economy uh, suffers if we've got, say, 30% of our kids leaving school uh, without a reasonable degree of intelligence, uh, without creativity, uh, without qualifications that they can move on with. I mean, the tax burden for a start is absolutely massive. Then you've got all of the other social issues. And then you think about that particular individual, as I say elsewhere in the report, you know, we're putting 33% of South Auckland Māori boys back into society, or into society as young adults after 13,200 provided education hours with no qualifications mm, whatsoever. Mm, mm. And those kids, mm. uh, it, it, they, as I said before, they will not be able to rent a good home. Mm. They will not be able to buy to save. They won't have an OE. Uh, they won't be able to provide for a family. Mm. A and it's, it's, it's a huge issue. And I, I guess, you know, people like myself and others whose children have done reasonably well, 
need to put our hands up for the kids who aren't. And, you know, even if that's out of a degree of self-interest, I want our society to be better. No, that's, I mean, obviously we do. But I guess the next issue is you go back to the parents. Um, there's a, interestingly, Correct. the um, British, um, I think it's Gov, um, who's meant to be in charge of uplifting standards in de- deprived or depressed areas, uh, mentioned yeah. um, this week that he wanted, he saw a need for the state to start to insist upon parents discharging their responsibility as parents. And he was talking in particular about linking school attendance um, with yep. with welfare benefits and saying, well, you, you know, yep. we'll, we cut your benefit if your kids don't go to school. Um, yeah. it, uh, so he was he was saying we've given plenty of the carrot and it hasn't worked. The sticks required as well. Yeah. Yeah, in, in New Zealand, I don't think we've given a lot of carrot. Uh, you know, I have never met a parent uh, of any student in, in my entire career who who doesn't care for their child and love their child. But sometimes there's a huge gap between that, I, I guess, almost sentimentality and and the practicals of seeing their child do well in school, et cetera. So the first thing, and I did discuss this at length with Bill English, and he was, he was very wise on it. The first thing is to, is to get the information out there very pervasively. This is how you be a good parent. And I don't believe that information is out pervasively in New Zealand at all. Oh, I agree. The There's no parenting handbook. Other, I mean, uh, we no. have a handbook for everything, for our car, for it. But when nobody, when you, it's, it's, it's interesting. I noticed that when I had my kids, I went, where's the book that says, <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I've got I've got a handbook for my car, which I, I probably don't need. I've got a whole set of instructions that comes with cons- my, 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 my fan. Um, I've got... Um, a whole series of um, <laughs> guidelines as to what happens when I need to operate my motor mower, which I've just bought for six hundred dollars. But hey, nice. here, take the kid off you go. And so instantly, most of us revert to, okay, how were we raised? But Correct. any development since then pff, flies out the window. Well, that's right, and. and um uh, I guess the you know the other thing in terms of this the, the stick getting kids to school and and I guess that's something you know having more truancy officers thing like that. Kennedy or Hitkins have not even once mentioned that schools have to get better. Schools have to become places that the worth of going to them is far more uh, significant and, and and obvious to families. You know, if you come to school, then this will be the, the, the series of benefits that, that you'll receive. At the moment, a lot of these schools um, have traumatised kids. They've been bullied. They don't see the point. Uh, you know, the, the, the classes are either boring or not challenging. Um, you've got all of these things. Well, if we want kids to go to school, we have to have good schools and we have to have great teachers. So the kids actually want to be there. Um, just corralling them in there because they need to go to school, it will have no benefit whatsoever. That's a fair point you raise. All right. Um, thank you, Elwyn, for joining us. We will publish both of the papers that you have uh, released. They are yep. um, the background to, um, well, the, the uh, all, every secondary school and UE standards yep. from 2018 to 2021, plus what you yep. say is the policy agenda uh, that will improve education and educational standards in this sure. country in Toto. I will, just, I will just send you one note, just to be fair, to a, to a small group of schools. Um, education counts, it seems for a few schools, and I, I can send you a list of who they are, haven't quite got the UE equivalents right for um, IB. They have for some of the IB schools, but for a few they may not have. Um, so I, I will send that list through as well. But okay, it's, it's a brief that'd be list. good. Yeah. Uh, and then okay. we'll put all three up and then people can see the correlator in between those. Yep. Thanks Thank- so much, Michael. Okay, thank you, Elwin. Um, that's Elwin Paul, educational researcher. Um, keeping, I, I think the answer to the question is he's keeping the education ministry honest by publishing these sorts of statistics. They should be published by our mainstream media. They are not. And 
if you're not going to talk about education and schooling, if you are not going to report upon them, if you're going to not delve into the statistics, if you're not going to be able to make comparisons, um, because comparisons are odious, dear, um, then you're not going to get any improvement either.